The next important topic is tsunami. Tsunami is associated with earthquake in the ocean floor. They are also called as hover waves. They are a high energy waves. Unlike the uh, waves caused by wind action, these waves are high energy waves and they are mainly caused due to marine sub, uh, submarine earthquakes and they cause a lot of destruction in the coastal areas like uh, the tsunami of 2004 has done to Indonesia, India, Sri Lanka etc. So what is the difference between normal waves and tsunami waves? Normal waves are the waves which have high amplitude in the deep oceans whereas their amplitude decreases when they hit the coast. These waves in these waves the movement of water is only on the surface and these waves have very small wavelengths that is they range only few meters and their frequency is comparatively higher compared to the uh, tsunami waves and the amplitude in the deep waters water bodies is uh, much higher compared to the ones in the shallow waters because once they enter the shallow waters most of the energy is lost and they die out soon after the reaching the coast just like in this figure and the other kind is called tsunami wave or tidal waves which involve not only the movement of uh, surface water but also a huge column of water just uh, much below the surface these waves are long wavelength waves where the, wave, uh, the time period of the wavelength might vary from a uh, few minutes to few uh, hours and these waves are high energy waves that is they do not die out soon after the heating the uh, coastal regions as they carry huge amount of water with them their amplitude is much high when they hit the uh, coast when compared to their amplitudes in the deep oceans in deep oceans they are less significant they may not be even observed as most of the movement of the water takes place within uh, the surface of the ocean flow water floor uh, but when they hit the coast they are they become waves with less uh, wave decreasing wavelength and uh, they, they will be increasing increase in amplitude so speed of the wave varies from uh, of the typical wave caused by wind action varies from 5 to 60 miles whereas uh, the tsunami wave varies from 500 to 600 miles so they are very fast moving waves and the wave period is much smaller for uh, the waves caused by wind action whereas the waves caused by tsunami have much higher wind time periods wave periods and the wavelength for these waves is only about 300 to 600 feet whereas for this the wavelength can vary across miles so th this is so what is wavelength wavelength is the region between uh, the distance between two crests that is maximum crest and the minimum crest and this region is called wavelength this distance so tsunamis have very high wavelength that is the whole crust crust they are so long they might be about 300 to 400 miles apart from each other hence, hence they are not observed on the ocean surface when when people are in the deep sea but when it comes to uh, near the coastal regions these earthquakes undergo significant transformation where the wavelengths decreases for example if this is the wavelength in the deep oceans the wavelength would significantly fall and the amplitude will significantly rise when they hit the coastal regions the normal waves are also called deep water waves because they can sustain their amplitudes only in deep waters but the, when they hit, hit the coast the amplitude completely falls that is they die out because of loss of total amount of energy whereas the tsunami waves are called as shallow water waves because they can sustain their amplitudes even when they hit the coast for a long period of time whereas the amplitude cannot be observed in the deep oceans because most of the movement of uh, the water column takes place below the surface and this is how tsunamis occur the first major event is the earthquake due to the faulting of uh, oceanic crust where a oceanic crustal plate subsides below another plate giving rise to the thr up thrusting of the lighter plate as a result huge column of water is displaced this column of water which is which possesses high energy which is uh, which is acquired from this up thrusting is transferred in the form of waves on the surface we can see here these waves have huge uh, very large wavelengths for example these waves can have wavelengths ranging from 6 to 800 miles and their speeds are very high like they travel 
for about uh, 500 to 800 kilometers per hour and during the instant stages there is residence res in the water ne near the coast because of the pulling of water during the upthrusting of the column here due to this upthrust there is huge amount of water displaced then certain amount of pulling takes place which results in residence of the water near the coast and once the energy is trans uh, transferred to the in the form of waves then waves start moving towards the coast and when they reach the coastline that is seabed the wavelengths and speed significantly fall and as the wavelength decreases its energy is transformed into high amplitudes as a result the amplitude of the wave increases and on uh, just before reaching the coastlines these waves start to appear uh, near the coastlines with uh, with very high amplitudes and and very high energies and once these waves hit the coastline they cause huge amount of destruction so in the surface waves caused mainly due to wind uh, due to wind the waves uh, propagate only on the surface there is no displacement of huge columns of water below hence these waves doesn't possess any huge amount of considerable amount of energy once they hit the coast their wavelengths as well as amplitudes completely uh, disappear whereas in the earthquake uh, the tsunami waves we can see that there is huge column of water which is being displaced hence they carry huge amount of energy and once on the wave hit the coast all the wavelength gets transformed into amplitude because of conservation of energy and this amplitude waves uh, uh, waves with high amplitudes which rise to several meters high wide might uh, will simply penetrate into cities and cause huge amount of destruction and this is what happened in 2004 tsunami where indian plate plunged into eurasian plate that is burma plate and due to the upthrusting of the burma plate that is this plate upthrusted as a result there was huge displacement of columns of water and the resultant tsunami so in indian ocean as the tsunamis are not seen often and the 2004 tsunami is the first major tsunami there were no uh, warning systems before this tsunami that is 2004 tsunami but in pacific ocean where tsunamis are very frequent they they have established warning system well before that is in 1965 which was administered by national oceanic and atmospheric administration and the pacific rim countries were the members of this association and the pacific tsunami warning center was established in hawaii which monitored the pacific ocean and send the warning signals in case of a tsunami and this NOAA created deep ocean assessment and reporting of tsunami system that is called which is called as dart gauge which is used in detection of tsunamis these whole systems are placed on the ocean surface where the pressure sensors sense the pressure and with slight change in pressure they can report to the surface stations which analyze the data and relate to satellites where the satellites can analyze the whole data and conclude if it's uh, if the pressure in change is caused by tsunami or less significant waves and based on the intensity of pressure they can come to a conclusion whether it's tsunami or not and based on that uh, the information will be transmitted to the neighboring countries so when it comes to preparedness in the indian ocean india leads as it is the major uh, power in the region india has established deep ocean assessment and reporting system after the 2004 tsunami india involved many other countries in the region which would help in uh, assimilating data due to tsunamis which are caused at various parts of the indian ocean a national tsunami and early warning system system early warning center was established under the ministry of uh, earth sciences in Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services in Hyderabad and this is the major institution that would take care of all the kinds of activities uh, associated to tsunamis in the ocean floor that is detection of tsunamis in the ocean floor so now India can be ready with all the necessary uh, disaster management activities just before the tsunamis can occur that is they have a window of two to three hours to get prepared to move people away as it takes about 32 minutes after the tsunami has occurred for the systems to send the data related to the tsunami and based on the data uh, the regional systems would analyze the data and conclude if it's a tsunami or not 
and based on that uh, the disaster management effort should be carried on and this is the end of the video thanks for watching